Welcome to this Tutor to You sociology topic video on feminist theories of crime and deviance. Examining the work of Pat Carlin. Using Travis Hershey's control theory as the basis of her research, Carlin examined the ways in which women were controlled in several different areas of society. She argued that the patriarchal control over women allowed them limited socially approved pathways for having a legitimate lifestyle in society and that the rejection of these pathways by women or their inability to achieve via these pathways led to criminality. Carlin's research selected women who had turned to criminality for various reasons, suggesting that there existed barriers for the women to have followed the legitimate pathways that society set out for them. The women she interviewed had criminal records. Some of these had been brought up in care, whilst most had experienced poverty. For these reasons, Carlin suggested that they were destined for criminality, as they had no other options. Carlin's research rejected the ideas of Frieda Adler, who have discussed in a previous video. Carlin suggested that feminism had not liberated all women to the extent that Adler suggested, and that women were still largely controlled through both formal and informal mechanisms of social control. From employment to their role in the family, in their relationships and through the expectations of society, women were controlled in their behaviours, largely because of society's expectations of how they should behave. Carlin outlined two ways in which women were expected to conform to social expectations, the class deal and the gender deal. As female involvement in paid work increased, those women who chose employment were rewarded with the class deal. According to Carlin, women sold their labour in return for material rewards, that is, wages, and they used these to obtain comfort through the purchase of material goods. In this way, women were controlled by expecting to be obedient to their employers, passive and submissive, in order to progress, and this extended into education, with girls' ambitions of employment being used as a mechanism of control where good behaviour and conformity would result in good grades. The second deal Carlin outlined was the gender deal. Now, this was the acceptance of the traditional role of housewife and mother, and Carlin suggested that women who chose this deal were rewarded emotionally through caring for their children, while they were supported financially by their partners who provided security in exchange for the emotional, psychological and practical support that a wife would offer. Carlin was writing at a time of greater inequalities in domestic labour, in part due to the smaller number of dual earner families, and so women would often either have the gender deal or the class deal rather than the combination of the two. Through interviewing the subjects in her research, Carlin suggested that criminality was a result of women either rejecting these deals or having the opportunities for these deals blocked. Those interviewed by Carlin were unable to obtain the material rewards of the class deal due to poverty, often due to long-term unemployment or because they lacked the qualifications in order to secure employment. Furthermore, psychological and emotional issues resulting from growing up in care or being the victims of domestic violence left the gender deal unappealing for women. For those women, the family was far from a source of emotional comfort, and so the gender deal offered little in the way of incentive. Carlin argued that the rejection of these deals led women to alternative methods, that is, crime. Now, while Carlin was writing in the early 1980s, evidence of the gender deal and the class deal can be found in more contemporary research such as the Causton report into the backgrounds of women in UK prisons. Many women in prison had a history of long-term unemployment and the majority, nearly 70%, left school with no formal qualifications. Both of these are indicators of the rejection of the class deal that Carlin outlined. Other evidence from the Causton report shows that one in five had no permanent residence prior to being imprisoned while one in three were lone parents and two in three were not in a relationship. This indicates the rejection of the gender deal that Carden argues is offered to women and provides compelling evidence of what Carlin suggests is a potential hazard of refusing to conform to society's expectations of women. In evaluation of Carlin's ideas of the gender and class deals, 
It can be argued that in contemporary society, there is increasing pressure on women to conform to both the gender and the class deals, which increases the level of control on women. Social pressures to have a good job, a perfect home and beautiful children increase the levels of informal control on women to conform to what society expects of them. However, some postmodernists would argue that women have more choice in contemporary society and that the class deal is more diverse than ever before, with many different pathways of obtaining material rewards. While emotional and psychological rewards are not limited to looking after children in contemporary society. Critics of Colin would suggest that the role of patriarchy is overstated in contemporary society, in particular with increased opportunities for financial success for women and changing attitudes to family life. Furthermore, Carlin focused her research on those that had accepted neither the class nor the gender deal. But this fails to explain why some working women or some married women may turn to crime. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on feminist theories of crime and deviance, focusing on the work of Pat Carlin. Thanks for watching.